So far away, Lucas, and lovely audience at home, are you all ready for another episode of Wiki Weekends, the series where I scour the lengths and breadths of the internet to find a wiki on something I'd like to talk about? And today, we're picking one of my favourite shows, or technically, two of my favourite shows. And Lucas, they star a very angry chef who just cannot fathom how so many restaurants are so shit. Do you want to hazard a guess at what the show is? Um... I might think it's Gordon Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares. It is Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares. Burn! You're cooking in a burnt pan, you fucking dick! So this episode has been a long time coming, Lucas, because you know that I love Gordon Ramsay. And you know that I love specifically Kitchen Nightmares. And did you know, Lucas, that Kitchen Nightmares can refer to two different shows? There is the better-known American version, known simply as Kitchen Nightmares, which is where most of the memes come from. Then there is the British version that started it called Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares, or alternately, Gordon Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares in some broadcasts. Yeah, and it's really funny because like a lot of the um, American ones were, you know, they get very antagonistic with one another. Yep. A lot of the British ones are like, I give up. It doesn't feel like a kitchen. No energy, no excitement, no... Passion, really, and sort of care. The love for food. It's just get in the bowl and fuck off out. And it's fascinating to watch both versions of the show. And I'm a fan of both for different reasons. I like the British version because it is just a really good, like, reality show about an expert in the field of running a restaurant walking in and just telling people what they're doing wrong. And then the American version's good because it's just a bunch of idiots being yelled at by a British guy who knows better than them, which, you know, just <laughs> soothes my British soul. That's my staff. Really? Fuck me. Seriously? Why throw my lemons like that for? Why are you taking my product they're and you're molding it away? you? Pay up. I was just seeing the most, like, stubborn, pig-headed Americans, like, I know what I'm doing. And then Gordon Ram's like, you an idiot, is I should do it. No. And then just the worst part about the entire show is so many of them, so many of them, you know, take the advice and then they, you come back a few months later and they've reversed every single decision. Yeah, and I'll never forget one of my favourite episodes because you can just watch full episodes on YouTube because the Ramsey's Kitchen Nightmares channel just uploads them all for free. And there's mm -hmm. one where a guy's coming in and goes, okay, so Ramsey's told us to do this, this and this, but that's just his opinion. And like the sous chef just goes, <laughs> well, it's a pretty, you know, like, you know, profitable opinion, mate. <laughs> That's all that needs to be said. He's like, he's known as the world's most successful chef. And so, well, that's just like, you know, his opinion. It's like, it's a pretty profitable opinion. Yeah, just whenever they do the taste test and the ones where they're, they're so adamant that it's good food that they'll taste it and be like, yeah, perfect, best thing I've ever eaten. It's like, you are either so stubborn or have the biggest blinkers on. My food is the best food that's possibly made. So everything is atrocious, chef. Well, the best episode for that is like probably one of the more infamous episodes, like the burger restaurant, where it's the two parents who stole their son's inheritance. <laughs> oh, and he's like 22 years old and he's already going bald from stress. Which is, it shouldn't be funny, but it's that thing of like, it's just so extreme. And like mm -hmm. Gordon Ramsay serves them a seasoned burger for the first time ever, and they're like, that's terrible, it tastes awful. And everyone's like, do you not know what seasoning <laughs> is? <laughs> what is that uh, strong so taste that I'm tasting? Greer cheese, and it's smoked, right? Yes. Yeah, I love it. And I'm only reminded of that like amazing amazing like new segment where that like white anchor dude tries seasoned chicken for the first time and he starts like beating his fist because he's never eaten seasoned chicken oh boy See, just get people I, off I face. really oh, go, go on lucas sorry i i really hope you you figure out how to find that clip because you've mentioned that clip several times and i've never seen it oh, i'll find it i'll find it for find. the edit dirty rice shrimp alfredo Mother turkey leg. Because <laughs> Lucas, you can cook some pretty goddamn good chicken. And I remember when I was at your house the other week, and you went, Well, instead of ordering a takeaway tonight, I've just made some chicken. And me and a friend were like, Yeah, that's good. And then by end at night, it was all gone because we kept going, Got any more of that chicken, Lucas? <laughs> it sounded like a slow cooker full of chicken. It was like, Throughout the night, we were just going, Might get some more chicken. <laughs> It started out as both of you being like, I might get like, you know, one sandwich for like a bit of chicken. 
and then just like coming back for seconds and thirds. And just by the end of the evening, it's like, man, I could proper go for some chicken. But I'm technically reading from two wikis here. So we've got the Ramsey's Kitchen mm. Nightmares and the Kitchen Nightmares, which are essentially the same show. We'll start with Ramsey's Kitchen Nightmares, the original that aired on British television. So Ramsey's Kitchen Nightmares, a television program featuring British celebrity chef Gordon Ramsay, first broadcast in 2004. And we all know the premise of like Kitchen Nightmares, don't we? It's just, Gordon Ramsay goes to a failing restaurant and yells at the owner until they fix it. You know, there's two ways in this industry. You move with the times, or mm-hmm. well, the times moves you. I always think to myself, like, oh man, you know, I'm a little bit stressed about, like, the way the world is and the fact that there's, like, financial crises going on and stuff. And then you turn on something like this and it's like, this person has, like, got themselves into half a million dollars debt and just on a failing restaurant, I'm like, Okay, I feel a little bit better. It could be worse. And one of the things I like about the British version is that more emphasis is placed on training the chef. Like, mm. Ramsay will more often than not, like, you know, take the chef out and, like, you know, teach them something. Whereas the American version is more about the business side, which you can just see as the difference there between, like, American and British culture. If we mm. care more about the human element, where in America it's more about the drama. Because, like, as you said, in like, every American one, it's like, they are half a million dollars in debt. Whereas the British version is more about just... How many customers you're getting in? Like how many covers you have on an evening? What are like, you know you're doing to like appeal to the local community? Whereas the American version is a little bit more slick, a bit more produced, which is one of the criticisms which we can get to. But in 2009, Ramsey announced that after four-year contract expired in 2011, he would not continue with Kitchen Nightmares and would instead work on other shows. Like because he's got like 50 different shows. He's got so many shows. Yeah, he's all over the shop, and I'm sure Master Chef makes him way more money than like. Rat, like kitchen nightmares does but it's one of those of i think like obviously i'm sure the, the wiki probably mentions that a lot of people criticize the show of like well 70 percent of these failing businesses never come back and it's like yeah because they were failing businesses yeah that is like a very infamous statistic i think it's like upwards of two-thirds to 75 percent of all the restaurants featured on the show eventually close down but gordon ramsay himself when he's been confronted about statistics says well yeah, they were going, like, that's pretty good considering 100% of them would have closed if I hadn't, like, intervened. The mm-hmm. fact that I managed to turn 25% of them around, if you notice, a lot of the ones that don't manage to turn it around either sell up because they just don't want to deal with the stress or completely go back on everything I told them to do, go back to their old ways, and then just fail. The ones that have managed to turn it around and keep going follow my advice. Yeah, there was one um, I was watching not too long ago where I actually Googled, like, what happened afterwards. and A lot of people like to do, yeah. Something, if you watch, like, the Gordon Ramsay Kitchen Nightmares YouTube channel, you'll see people mm-hmm. post in the comments, usually the top comment is just someone telling you, is the restaurant still open? Mm. And one that I found really interesting was the one where there's uh, two guys that are twins that own this, like, pizza yeah, Italian place. Yeah, I remember that one, because they were, like, really cool guys, and it's, you feel really bad for them, don't you? Because they genuinely yeah, care. Yeah, but... They come across, like, the way the show presents them is, like, almost completely useless, especially to begin with. You want to microwave these meatballs, please? Okay. Come on. Work with me. Jeez. And, like, they, they've they just... There's no hope for these two. They, they do not know what they're doing. And then you look at it, and it's like, no, they follow the advice it became relatively successful. They sold and made a profit. And it's like, that's a really good story to come out of, like, yeah, we are in horrible debt. It's like the world's most famous chef came in and said, do this, 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 and that, and you will succeed. It'll take a couple of years and some hard work, but you will succeed. Okay, I'm going to listen to Gordon Ramsay, the man who's <laughs> introducing every show he's on us, the world's most successful chef. And of course, there's me, Gordon Ramsay. I've been in the restaurant business for 20 years and have 28 restaurants worldwide. We have the series overview. I'm just going to go over the first episode of the first series. That's like probably the most famous one and you can find like a full like you know um, example of it on youtube and we'll put clips in but just this one i think sums up why the show has its name kitchen nightmares and i believe it's a line from this episode that actually inspired the title of the show because it was unnamed until they filmed mm-hmm. this initial pilot and just heard one of the words gordon ramsay said so series one episode one Bonaparte's. Bonaparte's restaurant is in dire straits. And it's set in Sildesden, England. So Ramsay quickly identifies the restaurant as having two major issues. Firstly, the fine dining menu has no appeal to the mostly working class locals. And that's the problem yeah. there. And it's something that he addresses like, look, you're trying to sell fancy food to a working class town of people. 
Mm -hmm. So, you know, these are good, honest, hardworking people. They don't want to spend, and they, some of them don't have the ability to spend like 30, 40, 50 pounds on a nice meal. But if you sell like, you know, 10, 15, 20 pounds ahead, you could get like, you know, four times as many people in and still turn a profit. Um, fish bars, cafes, quite a quaint little place, little small Yorkshire town. It's all about recognizing, like, you know, the area in which you live and, you know, offering a service that, you know, is beneficial and attractive to them. It's not about what you want, it's about what the customer wants. Customer is king. You can't just set up stall in a place where there's no market. Yeah, and we have here. So. <laughs> However, secondly, and perhaps more importantly, uh, the issue is the 21-year-old chef, Tim Gray, who is inexperienced, incompetent, and out of his depth. First evidence as he unwittingly serves Ramsay expired scallops, which cause him to vomit. How can you eat that? Oh. If you knew they were off, I didn't. why didn't you say? No, I didn't. I didn't know they were off. They're fucking minging. Yeah. And also, he proves himself unable to make an omelette. A head chef who can't, and I think Ramsay even says, he's your head chef and he can't even cook a fucking egg. Look inside. What does that tell you? Um, slightly overcooked. Slightly. <laughs> See, people don't know, like one of the first things you get taught as a chef is how to cook an egg because there's like so many different ways. It's one of the most versatile ingredients in the kitchen. And supposedly, mm -hmm. like, you know, all the folds on like, you know, the traditional idea of a chef's hat are supposedly representative of the multiple different ways it's possible to cook an egg. Because they say, like, you know, a master chef should be able to cook the most basic, basic of ingredients to absolute perfection without trying, which is why Ramsay on other shows, he's done like master chef and stuff. Like, the first thing you'll do is, okay, cook some scallops. They're very simple easy to cook dish, but that, them being so simple and easy means a lot of people take them for granted or, you know, don't put the same level of care and effort they would in with perhaps a more complicated dish. If you can't cook the simple stuff, how can I trust you to cook the more complex stuff? Yeah, and it is just funny because I think that's the episode, right, where he goes round to his, like, house. Yeah, he goes to his house. And, and he, tells he, him to cook an egg. And the guy's, like, really surprised. He's like, what? He's like, can you cook an egg? He's like, yeah, I can cook an egg. Cook me an egg. And he's like in his hat and the guy's laughing and Ram's like, I'm not laughing, cook me an egg. You're a head chef, you've been paid 30 grand a year, cook a fucking egg. Right, make me another omelette, fuck it, let's go. And that's the episode as well where they asked the guy, so what would you want, what do you want to do with your life? He goes, I want to be a celebrity TV chef like you. And you see Ramsey just go, <laughs> like, he cannot cook an egg and he has no charisma or screen presence. Like, I want to be a celebrity chef. So, you can't cook an egg. <laughs> <laughs> Ramsay shows Tim how to buy cheaper produce from the Leeds Kirkgate market and helps him make a meal for his family. Though he's still concerned when Tim botches even this meal cooked with like, you know, almost no steaks. And that's the one way having up. He goes into the market, he goes, have you ever shopped in a market for fresh ingredients before? And the guy's like, no. So you're a head chef and you've never bought your own ingredients? No. And he walks him into the market and the guy's buying ingredients and the guy's like, oh, so how much are these then? And Ramsay's just like, ask him if he does a discount for trade. What? Discount for trade. You're a, you're a local <laughs> trader. Ask if it was a discount for trade. Like, you know, oh, do you do a discount for trade? They're like, yeah, of course we do. What would you do with a brazen steak? I don't know, really. Maybe barbecue. Oh. Quite nice on barbecue, you know, and when she gets them going outside. Brazen steak means fucking brazen. But he has yeah. no idea that's a thing you can do. Like, you're a local business. Try and establish a working business relationship with the local supplier. You'll get it cheaper, and then you can advertise local fresh ingredients. How do you not get this? And that's why you can see, like, People, he has that reputation in the American version as being so angry, but you can see why he'd be upset and frustrated and angry when. Something that must seem so simple to him, like the cornerstone of his entire career. Stuff that must just seem like as simple as breathing is to him. And he's talking mm -hmm. to people who are professional, supposedly professional chefs charging top whack for their food, don't understand the most basic components of running a kitchen. They don't even understand the basic components of cooking in some cases. Yeah, and I think obviously the the answer in this scenario for this one was like the dude's twenty one year old and like never got trained at all. He yeah, didn't even go to culinary. God, nothing. You been to culinary school? No, you don't need to. If you want to be a chef, you do. <laughs> but even if you don't have to, 
at least you go up through the ranks of like being trained as an apprentice by a proper head chef who knows what they're doing. Yep, it says here, when Ramsay returns for a revisit a month later, which is one of the things I like about the British version, he always goes back in a month later to see what's going on. He finds mm. the restaurant in an even worse state than when he first arrived. No guests booked for dinner, and the fridges and pantry are found to be full of rotting, mouldy food. Untitled filming, the series will take its name from Ramsay describing the kitchen as, and I quote, a living fucking nightmare. This is not right. This is this is fucking miles away. This is a nightmare. You know that because it's more loss on top of more loss and more loss and more mold. And that is the one part of the show that I don't like is when they go through the fridges. It makes you feel so bad, don't it? And I I literally start skipping nowadays because of my. I start feeling physically ill when I see this like two-year-old foods at the bottom of a fridge. Uh, it's, do you know what, I will say one of my favourite parts of any like Ram, like Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares or Kitchen Nightmares episode is when he just wanders around the, like, the fridge in the kitchen. Because you know it's always going to be a nightmare and that's why we like, you know, the American version, I will say is superior to this because it's funnier. Because that's when they mm -hmm. have like the, the zoom in on like the mouldy food and you get some of the best memes from it. Like just Ramsay being like, I'm, you know I'm going to mention it, Lucas. The freshest thing in this kitchen is that <laughs> pigeon. And the freshest thing in this kitchen is that pigeon flying around. And he's lucky he's still alive. <laughs> Which his own YouTube channel made like a meme edit of and it's like a, a pigeon in like a supreme jacket. He says, thank you, chef. I think... You know, we're sitting here running a YouTube channel ourselves, mm -hmm. and I will say we will never top like the Ramsey's Kitchen Nightmares channel in terms of just the title. In I love like the theory that it's like run by his daughter. Jokes like he's got a TikTok <laughs> and he like just Ramsey just annihilates yeah. people on TikTok all the time. Mm -hmm. And it's just yeah, like he's just that's the thing as well. He's not only like there's probably someone out there who's a better chef than Gordon Ramsay. A lot of people say like Anthony Bourdain. He was like a great chef and he had like a a similar like no zest and love for food. But I think one of the reasons I like Gordon Ramsay so much is that he has this reputation as being like the world's angriest chef. But there's a great interview with him where he talks about it, where someone asks him, so you're like this raging arsehole on Kitchen Nightmares. He's like, yeah, okay, guilty. But when it comes to like Master Chef and Junior Master Chef especially, you're a lot more calm. And that's where you get like, the, again, the meme where it's like him like hugging the girl saying, oh, don't worry about it, dear. Then the show on the show like, you fucking donkey. He goes, what, why do you do that? He goes, well, you know, when it's MasterChef, these are amateurs. Like, they don't tell, they're not, mm. they're, they're bakers, they're homemakers, they're, like, you know, people with jobs. They cook for fun, for a hobby. I don't expect them to be professional chefs, and I'll give them the leniency that they deserve. Two completely different competitions. Yeah. You know, House Kitchen's about professionals. And like I said, even before I started working on television, mm -hmm. you know, I've mastered my craft. Right. You know, I spent three years getting my ass kicked in France, and then literally eight years, ten years, like reading medicine, studying under some great chefs to really perfect my trade. So then when I got a chance to sort of do my profession on television, it was Kitchen Nightmares that really started first. So that was real because I, I wanted these businesses to, to work. Master Chef is completely different. These are amateurs that have full-time jobs as yeah. firefighters, school teachers, bank clerks. And so the journey from apron to finale, they finish like professional chefs. And you can tell that he's getting frustrated that he has to explain this. Uh, well, you're an arsehole to everyone. He's like, no, I'm not an arsehole to people. We're charging you, the public, money for food. It should be held mm -hmm. to a higher standard. I'm angry on your behalf. I'm, I don't understand why you're not mad that they're doing this, <laughs> that they're charging you top whack for frozen food you could cook yourself at home. On this one here, you've got some raw chicken. Cook pork there. I'm trying. You're being, you're being a fucking asshole. This wasn't like this. Hold on it a wasn't minute. like this. I don't hold, run a kitchen like this. Hold on a minute. You're calling me a fucking asshole? I am. Yeah, and especially when it's like, as we mentioned, just mouldy food, food out of date, shit like that. Like, there's multiple times where obviously just he figures out halfway through a night this food is out of date and just goes and tells the customers, like, sorry, um, this food is, you know, out of date. You're not allowed to order it anymore. And and like, you oh. can kill someone. And then it's, you'll see sometimes, like, the owner will get mad. Like, I don't know why you had to embarrass me like that. It's like, you could have killed someone! Mm -hmm. And again, he gets framed as being really, like, angry. It's like, but he's angry for a pretty good reason. Like, I want someone like Gordon Ramsay going through every kitchen of every restaurant I've eaten in. This is not good. Raw chicken! That should never happen. You know? should... Oh my god! Chris, yeah. it's fucking chicken against raw chicken! It's, it's fucking... Hey, panini head, are you listening to me? Yes. You're gonna kill someone! Yeah, for sure. As somebody that worded multiple restaurants over the years, like, I 
definitely want to make sure that, you know, all of the fridges have fresh food rather than just out of date stuff or things that eat, like just aren't dated. That's what scares me. Yeah. And uh, I remember when I worked in a kitchen, I remember I had an argument with like a manager about this where I was like, I walked in on my first day, it was after the weekend, and just she walked in, she saw me just throwing stuff into the bin. So, what are you doing? We bought all that yesterday. Well, that was all open yesterday. I went, okay, it's not labeled though. Yeah, but I know that it was open yesterday, so, but I don't, and it's not labeled, so I need to throw it away. And we had mm-hmm. this big act that like, cost us money. We've got, we'll have no more like lemons or limes, you know, like lime juice. Like, well, that's not my problem. It's not labeled. You should have labeled it yesterday. And it's just like this whole thing, like, no, you're not throwing it away. I'll put, I'll dock your pay. Like, okay, so do you want to write down a piece of paper that you're doing this? I can just take it to the head office because I know for a fact we're not allowed to fucking... Do you want to go talk to a head chef about this? It's like, you should be labeling your fucking food. And it's like, some people, they don't understand. So why do I have to label it at home? It's like, Cause you're eating it. You're selling it for money. <laughs> Well, then we have receptions. The reception for the British version. The program received generally favourable reviews for its in-depth look into the restaurant industry. For example, Jane Redfem of Off The Telly commented that the show could have been cynically designed to exploit Ramsay's foul-mouthed reputation. If you watch and listen and think about what he's saying and his genuine commitment to his profession in general and the task at hand, it becomes abundantly evident that he cares. And just that stands in stark contrast to the American version where it's just like, IT'S FUCKING RAW! <laughs> Which is why he's such a fascinating individual to look at the success of, because he has this reputation that I don't, it's well earned, but I don't think it's entirely accurate. He just really cares about food, and that care sometimes comes across as like um, uh, being like difficult to work with, because yeah, he, expect, he demands the highest standards of himself and those that he works with as well, which is what he talks about. Yeah, and people who actually watch the show will probably understand that he's difficult to work with when you're difficult to work with. Yeah, and I see if you're willing to, and that one, some of the best episodes where people just are willing to work with him, or you know, they'll take his advice to heart. Mm-hmm. That's why it's like when people on Master Chef and stuff, it's like the complete just difference between him. And one of my favourite shows that he's done, it got a lot of criticism at first when people first heard the premise, but when the show actually came out. Like, um, it, all of that kind of evaporated, where it was he was going to travel the world, going to various different regions, learning how to cook their cuisine. And mm. that was framed initially as, oh, is he going to go over to foreign countries and show them how to cook their food better? And it's not. It's him going there, learning about their techniques, and then folding them into his repertoire, and then seeing if he can combine their techniques with modern ones, or ones from, like, you know, um, a Western viewpoint, that might change the food. And a lot of the times, the locals prefer the way it's locally prepared, but they will take some of the stuff on board. And he just treats it as it's a huge learning experience for me. I'm gonna go to all these different, go to work with ingredients that I'm not familiar with and stuff like that. This is the ultimate challenge for a chef. The Maori first arrived in New Zealand on pioneering voyages from Polynesia in the 13th century. Although they brought some crops with them, much of their diet relied on hunting and gathering from the forest and ocean. A tradition which Maori chefs like Monique are keeping alive through their cooking. And I have seen it before where, you know, people will give Gordon Ramsay flack. I remember, like, there was one where I think it was Uncle Roger that was telling him that he doesn't know how to make fried rice as well as he does. And it's like, okay, yeah, but did you grow up making fried rice? Did you make fried rice your entire life? You're probably going to make it better than Gordon Ramsay, but... He's going to have a solid knowledge base on a lot of things. And there's a couple of episodes and shows where like people will cook stuff better than him, and he he doesn't get annoyed. He like takes on board what they say. There's like a, a clip that goes viral every now and again of him trying to cook pad thai. Helping me fulfil this honour and privilege is Chang, executive chef at the Blue Elephant, one of London's top Thai restaurants. And a guy's like, mm. that's not very good. And Gordon Ramsay, like, you just sit there and go, okay, why not? You just immediately see he goes into learning mode, and he wants to absorb everything he can about what's wrong with it. Well, uh, uh, how is it? Hmm? Oh no, look at that face. This is not pad thai at all. This is not pad thai? No. no. Pad thai have to be sweet, sour and salty. And like when he gets those criticisms, like you're not cooking like authentic food in the way that you prepared in the region. It's like, I know I'm not because I'm not from that region. I'm putting my spin on it as a professional chef with 30, 40 years of experience at this point. But I always stop and listen to the people from that region to absorb what knowledge I can and absorb it into my own repertoire. I'm not claiming to be the best chef at cooking like Vietnamese food, but I will say I can cook Vietnamese food, so I've been trained by Vietnamese chefs, for example. I've been to lots of Vietnamese restaurants in London, yep. and the broth and the soup's absolutely fine, but nowhere near as delicious right, right. as this. Yes. You're an amazing it's lady. Maybe based on like the crease in his face, that might be like 80 years experience, I'm not gonna lie. I still think my, like, that's the thing, people say I, 
I don't know why people say I sometimes like Gordon Ramsay. And it's like, I don't think I look that stressed. You don't. <laughs> you don't. Uh, but then we have the American version, Lucas. So Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares is the British version. Now we're on to Kitchen Nightmares, which you know, the synopsis is basically the same. Kitchen Nightmares, known in the UK as Ramsay Kitchen, Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares USA, is an American reality TV series broadcast on Fox with chef Gordon Ramsay invited by the owner to spend a week in a failing restaurant. The show premiered in 2007, so three years after the original, and then it was revamped in 2018 with Gordon Ramsay's 24 Hours to Hell and Back, where it's basically just he tries to fix the restaurant in 24 four hours which you can just that's such an american thing isn't it of like we want to see you fix it in a big bombastic way in 24 hours and they give like a big truck where he drives around america and he pulls up outside in the big truck and a big team comes in and revamps your restaurant in 24 hours and the actual benefit of having gone ramsey there of having his expertise is almost completely useless mm -hmm. because he's only there for a day are you fucking blind yes, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just voicing my opinion would you mind doing me a favor yes watch carefully And I, I wonder how much of that is TV production side, and I wonder how much of it is Gordon Ramsay being like, I don't have the time to spend an entire week at a restaurant. Like, he anymore. really doesn't know. He's like, he's such a, like, he's just busy on TikTok and stuff. But yeah, yeah. I think that just sums up like the difference between the American version. And I think one of the key things about the original British version I like is that Gordon Ramsay himself narrates it and writes the scripts. And it's Is a lot, he? yeah, and it's a lot calmer as well. It is, yeah. But as I say, I think like. A lot of that is because the people in the, the British one, that most of them aren't antagonistic. They've just given up on life. Yeah, and one of the things I like about when it's framed as it's Gordon Ramsay doing the voiceover, it's almost like his internal monologue, so you get to hear his thoughts as he's going through the restaurant. <coughs> he's only gone and given me a rancid scallop. Whereas in the American version, it's more like third person. Like there's, mm -hmm. there's le it's less personable, even though ostensibly the American version is more people orientated because it focuses on like, the drama and the, the family dynamic of a lot of the restaurants and why they're failing. But it's, it's like more of an, like, it's more the veneer of authenticity and like you don't really feel that there's any genuine enthusiasm from anyone there. Back at the restaurant, David is preparing Chef Ramsay's burger. Let's call this one the Redemption Burger. Yeah, it is that weird thing, isn't it, of like the, the difference between American and British TV. And I think the way that those two shows are set up is like a really good encapsulation of that. Because, it, as you say, it, it kind of has that almost American veneer of sincerity, whereas the British one is actually very sincere. Well, it's weird, it's, you know, that the show is focused on, like, restaurants and the service industry, because I compare it as the difference between, like, American service and British service, or service that you'd find, like, you know, Europe. Because there's mm -hmm. something that you'll see with American tourists, and they go somewhere like France or Italy, and they say, like, the waiter's not attentive enough, even though, like, France and Italy and those countries have such a huge emphasis on service as a culture. Right. What you need to do is fucking relax. Mm -hmm. A great service is attentive without being noticed. Okay. So far, you're making my shit itch. Okay. And it hasn't come out yet. Okay. That's how irritating you are! Okay. Right, ladies. I've been to France a lot of times, but most of that is specifically just being in Disneyland. So, like, you go into, like, not real restaurants there. But, that th but, uh, but when you go to American ones, like, oh, they didn't cook and offer me a refill every 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. It's like, I find that more off-putting as a British. It's like, if you've been to an American shop and the, you walk in in 10 seconds, do you need any help? Like, no. Just browse in. <laughs> do you need any help? Just, ju again, just browse in. And I find that more insincere and more yeah, off-putting. And I think the thing with most European services is probably that a waiter will be there even when you need them, but they will... You know, need an indication to come over. They don't want to disturb. Whereas, like uh, as you say, the American perspective on that is, oh, they're ignoring me. So no, they're giving you space. Yeah, they're giving you space to enjoy the meal, the ambiance. I'm sorry, I don't speak. But this is a French restaurant, no? We? Oui? <laughs> Name, please. Parker. Peter. It's like um, there's all those great reviews you'll find about Americans who go to Italy. And it's like, well, we couldn't find our waiter. Our waiter wouldn't give us our bill. So like, did you ask for the bill? Well, no, we expected to get up. But in Italy, they want you to spend as much time in the restaurant as possible. Like, the like, mm -hmm. restaurants in Italy will stay up until like one o'clock in the morning so you can have a coffee. And the waiter will just leave you until you're done. Like they don't want to bother you because you're having a nice time. Yeah, again, from our perspective, if someone comes up to your table and just gives you the bill unprompted, that's 
a sign of like them kicking you out the restaurant essentially yeah but it's, like, it's one of those differences in culture but you know mm-hmm. there's a fun part of the american version speaking of it being um, inherently american lawsuits so on september 2007 a case was filed by martin hyde the former manager of dylan's against ramsey for 10 separate offenses including allegedly staging disasters and hiring actors to trick the viewing audience the case was dismissed because the contract signed by hyde stipulated arbitration in the event of a legal dispute so you sign a contract saying we can do what the fuck we want. And I'm sure that there's elements, especially um, in the more produced American version, where yet yeah, things are set up for drama. But, you know, that's television, I'm afraid. You've signed up for this. Not to mention as well, like, most of those don't need the drama when you've just got, like, some dude just screaming his head off at his staff or withholding tips. That's inherently going to be dramatic as it is. But in 2018, Mm -hmm. the Oceana Grill sued Ramsey and the show's production company alleging fabrication. Specifically, they claim that Ramsey staged a scene where he vomited during his kitchen inspection and planted a mouse in a rodent trap to manufacture drama for the show. The mouse that you planted, I know. They told me, but it's okay. No, it's not okay. It's a show. It's got nothing to do with TV, nothing to do with your business in the shit. I am not going to stand there and even attempt to take that crap from you. I mean, if that's true, then that is bullshit, yeah. He says that, like, you know, that never went anywhere. So then they tried to sue again for using clips from the episode on their Facebook um, uh, profile because that wasn't in their original. So basically, they just wanted more money. Yeah. Yeah. Although those days were like, oh, they stayed to see where he vomited. It's like, man, your food must have been that bad, eh? It was that bad. Yeah, that's the thing. I, I I get, as I said, like the kind of dramatization of TV that's going to happen. And even reality TV show, they put like situations in place to kind of make sure that drama happens. So it's interesting. But I, yeah, I would I would definitely call bullshit if they started planting rodents in a restaurant or something but, but yeah there's no proof that they did that but they accused them of mm-hmm. doing so it's like maybe it was just a mouse and you're just salty that there happened to be a camera crew there on that day then yeah. we have reception gina belafonte of the new york times found ramsey's teaching methods to be undeniably hypnotic and commented on his high standards and commented that the thrill of watching mr ramsey is in witnessing someone so at peace with his own arrogance so what do you call it arrogance it's like he just knows what the fuck he's doing you run a shit all of the kitchen. Fuck yourself. No. Okay. No, no. Fuck off. It's still great though when you get these people of like, well, who the fuck does he think he is? What I do like. It's like he's Gordon Ramsay. One of the best burns he has is when some like restaurant owners arguing with him about it. He goes, "Oh, do you need to just stand here and feel important that you can run a business?" He goes, "No. What I do is every single day I call up my restaurant and see it's fully booked for the next six months." <laughs> That's how I feel good about myself as a chef. And just the guy just shuts the door. Someone's like, I bet your kitchen's just as dirty. He goes, well, we're in New York. My, my kitchen is just down the road. Let's go, <laughs> shall we? And he walks into his own restaurant unannounced and does a... Sp- and the inspector goes, let's look at the kitchen, shall we? And it's fucking immaculate. Okay, I want to show you something. The difference between night and day. This is a kitchen. All kitchens should be like this. Yeah, but then we have other critics who've commented that Fox's adaptation of Kitchen Nightmares strayed from the strengths of the original Channel 4 series. For example, Maureen Ryan of the Chicago Tribune said, leave it to Fox to take something the Brits did pretty well and muck it all the way up. Never mind the cooking, this edition of the show appears to be more interesting playing up to the family dramas and the restaurants that Ramsay visits, which is, you know, yeah, that's pretty much, you know, the whole deal there. Just, they focus more on the drama than they do on the inherent interestingness of seeing a, a expert in the field go in and be like, hey, you're fucking up in this, 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 in this regard. That's the part I find interesting. I like seeing someone who's like, you know, apps, inarguably one of the most qualified people in the world on this one very specific thing, going in and having to interact with a fucking moron who thinks they know what they're talking about. I agree, but there is just that element of watchability to the American version. Of course, version. that's the thing that they have. I enjoy them for different reasons. Like, I enjoy mm. the American one because it's just really just up their own ass Americans yelling at Gordon Ramsay. Like, you don't know what you're doing. That's not how things work in America. You know, I've got like 12 American restaurants and all doing pretty well. How's yours doing? <laughs> and it's like, yeah, boy. I don't care for your restaurant. I want to take that out there. I dare you. Take it out there. Go on. Give it to them. Yeah, there you go. It's with me. Look at me. Why wouldn't you take it out there? That's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Why are you serving it? 
You don't fucking care. So Lucas, I love all the stuff that Gordon Ramsay has done and could talk about it all day. And if anyone in the audience just so happens to agree with that sentiment, they can go click on the links below to find our Discord where they can find the discussion for this video and just go let us know their favorite Gordon Ramsay moments. Cause that's what me and Luke's gonna do right now. So do you have a favorite Gordon Ramsay moment that you'd like me to put in a clip of? Because I, I'm gonna be putting in the one like, hey, the, the freshest thing in this kitchen is that pigeon. Just thank you, chef. Just, just, just a little, I mean, the pigeon in the puffer jacket is so good. I can't go this entire video without mentioning Chef Mike. Chef. Just <laughs> explain Chef Mike. I remember like Chef Mike is like one of those things where it's one of the few times someone actually gets one over on Gordon Ramsay. He's like he's a pretty clued in dude. Yeah, but every like the the I can't remember what the episode is. I'm sure you'll be able to. Track I'll track it down, down the like, episode. Yeah. It's just every now and then the kitchen is just like, oh yeah, that's what Chef Mike does. Who cooked that, uh, Dustin? That's Chef Mike. Chef who? Chef Mike. And you never get to meet Chef Mike. And Gordon eventually is like, after what, three, four, five times with that, yeah, that's Chef Mike's job. Like, who is this Chef Mike? I've not met him yet. And they just point to the microwave. It's a microwave. I thought there was a third chef. <laughs> he kind of is. He does Are a lot we... of work in the kitchen. Uh. We use Chef Mike a lot. Whenever there's lights on in this restaurant, Chef Mike's working. <laughs> and it's the thing, because you see Gordon Ramsay's face drop. As you realize, <laughs> one, they're cooking all the shit in the microwave, but two, he's fallen for it. And I think that's the episode as well, where he throws it out the window. And the I thumbnail so, they yeah. have for the episode on YouTube is like, <laughs> the microwave halfway out the window. It's like the title's like, Gordon Ramsay kills Chef Mike. It's like the Ron Swanson throwing the PC in the dumpster it's so moment, good, isn't but it? It's just more that thing that you just see his face where he just goes... <sighs> Chef Mike, you've been so busy, it's time that you took a little vacation. Later, Chef Mike! Yeah! So I like the, the <laughs> thumbnails you have on the, the, the YouTube channel. Like, there's a couple that just live rent-free. One is thin crust pizza has massive crusts. And it's just a picture <laughs> of this like 14-inch piece from Gordon Ramsay just being like... Or well, the other one's like, restaurant serves Ramsay grilled lettuce, and you see someone just <laughs> grilling lettuce on a, on a barbecue grill, and Gordon Ramsay's like, it's lettuce! Salad. Come on. It is grilled. Are you still amazed? I'm shocked. I've never thought about it, but it's true. Like, wait, why are we grilling lettuce? Sorry for interrupting, just two seconds. But this is a first for me. A grilled Caesar salad. <laughs> Don't know, but they actually grilled the lettuce. <laughs> Why are you grilling lettuce? Oh dear. I think like one of my more low-key moments from the British one that I always love though is just the dude with the hoard of plates. Oh, he just got in like, because he's hiding <laughs> plates everywhere. <laughs> It's like, why have you got so many plates? And his hobby is just buying stacks of plates off eBay. Yeah, and like you see Ramsey just going through, the, just getting more and more exasperated <laughs> as he just opens boxes upon boxes of plates. He's like, what do you even need all these plates for? <laughs> Get, and the best bit is, I think he goes back to that restaurant and he's like, D have you bought any new plates? He's like, no, I've not bought any new plates. And like, can I check your stock room? He's like, no. <laughs> I think he's hiding them in he's like He's hiding the plates. He's like, you've got a problem. Stop <laughs> buying plates. You you can you can go tiling with that thing. You know that we can retile this whole establishment with these plates. Just look what we can start doing in terms of look. Uh, already it's starting to look unique, isn't it? Yep. Uh, and so you said what 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 Chinese dish on this one? It wasn't, it was a Japanese dish. Christ almighty. <laughs> But again, uh. you could like feel like his exasperation of like, it must be so frustrating of just. It's like, oh, I've got a failing business and it, we, like the kitchen's falling apart, but we do have 8,000 plates. It's like, why? I, I, I love plates. Whereas other people will go and have a holiday or go out for a meal, I'll save my pennies and buy a plate. And you mentioned like just the little moments that crack you up and there's a similar thing in an early episode of the British version where he's just <laughs> talking to the guy of like, okay, so um, uh, I've noticed that you have this offer here of it's like two Sunday lunches for a fiver. 
And the guy's like, yeah, that's our most popular thing. And Ramsey goes, I'm not surprised because that's a ridiculous deal. Do you make any money on that? And the guy's like, no, but it does get a lot of customers in. And you see Gordon Ramsey just go, <laughs> um, please buy one, get one free. Um, so it's 50%. If, um, so you eat here for five Um, yes. But does it make you any money? He goes, no, but our customers really like it. He goes, but does it make you any money? We, we need to stop this offer. And the guy's like, but if we stop that offer, we won't get any customers in. It's like, those customers are costing you money. Their presence in your restaurant is an active trade. You could not open and earn more money than running this, like, deal. He goes, but our customers like it, though. And it's like, and I think, so, like... Okay, do the people coming in for that offer ever come in any other time, Oh, though? no, they don't no. come in for that offer, and they take half of it home with them and eat the next day. And did you bring your voucher today? Yes, yes. And did you bring your coupon? No, that's what we get. <laughs> that's what we get. I mean, it's cheaper to come here than it is cooking at home. Oh, yes, definitely. Yeah, for two of us, it's really marvellous value. And Gordon's yeah. like, we'll get rid of that offer then. And he says, we've had complaints all week of people wanting that offer. He's like, no wonder, they were ripping you off. <laughs> and I think well, as soon as Gordon Ramsay leaves, they put that offer back on. And he's like, oh. why? You must have dementia to only let half your punters pay. No wonder this business is losing money. You're a business, you need to make some money. He's like, say, you see it in the American version a lot, don't you? Like, okay, we're going to change the food to actually be fresh and uh, prepared on the premises. And the guy's like, well, you know, some of our customers might not like that. It's mean, you mean the customers that aren't paying your bills? Mm -hmm. Why do you give a shit? And he goes, but we, customers might complain. Who gives a shit they're not paying your bills? And, he, and, he, and he, you feel he's frustrated. He cannot get across to them. It's like, but we might alienate the people who already come in. It's like, but those people aren't paying your bills. If it was enough that they could pay your bills, I wouldn't be here. Maybe you need new people in. Mm -hmm. And just no matter how, you know, clearly, he explains it to them. Their response is always, but what about our customers though? It's like, but they're not paying your bills. And then the best part is they change the food and every single one of those quote unquote loyal customers that will be upset is like, oh, the food's so much better. It's just every single time, all the people who, like I said, there's the people who complain because it's like actually seasoned mm. and they're amazing. Like I said, that, that restaurant where just... he seasons the meat and the person spits it out and you see Gordon Ramsay just go, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, sure. Just, yeah, cool. And you know how annoyed he is about that, but like they're like, no, this is this is all we do. Or oh, like, just it's such a good show, and I highly recommend people go out and watch it. Like, so there's so many episodes for free on the official like Gordon Ramsay YouTube channel. Go enjoy mm -hmm. them, enjoy the clips, talk about the um, uh, the show in uh, the comment section below. Like, comment, subscribe for all that good stuff, and we'll see you all next time.